Oh my god. Oh my god, you guys. I'm so excited. You have no idea. So, um, this week's been a little interesting. Um, not only... Well, this interview in particular is going to be very, very fun, guys. Uh, welcome back. Sorry. Hi. Welcome back to Movies, Music, and Mayhem. I am your host, Richard Silvestrini. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, um, I missed you guys. Um, this is a very special interview for me because this is the person, the first person I met in all of Schmodown um, before I even knew what really Schmodown was. Um, and we'll have fun telling that story. But guys, welcome. She is the mistress of mayhem herself, according to the movie trivia showdown, it is the great Grace Hancock. I mean, thank you, ma'am. I will never, I'm going to need you to record that intro for me for every show that I do going forward, because that was awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Um, now, do you remember us meeting? No, no, I don't. I'm sure I do, but like, I don't know in my mind. I'm sure because I'm sure because what I do is that I just treat everybody like we're already friends. So True. I'm sure that it was our first time meeting, but I was like, hey, so no. So I don't remember specifically. I, I sat to hear about it. I sat next to you and Wendy as you guys were preparing for the WonderCon panel in 2017. Oh my God. No, I do remember this. Okay. I remember. And I was cracking jokes under my breath and you and Wendy were giggling with me. And before I even knew who Daddy Harloff was, he was looking down at us and being like. <laughs> he was like, already mad. He was already like, grouchy. He was like, shut up. He was like, knock it off. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't know who you yeah, are, but I'm sorry. But I won't. But you were like, shut up. <laughs> and I was like, no. I forgot all about that. That is crazy. That's how, how weirdly just itty bitty the world is. I love that. Yeah. The world is so small. And I just remember being like. Like, I just remember walking in and seeing two purses on two chairs and then an empty chair and being like, well, I'm going to sit here. And if they don't want me to sit here, they can go fuck themselves because this place is packed. Um, like, also, that's the day I stole both of your purses. Yeah. I mean, IDs, I know where you live. Uh, you know, it's that fun. So funny. But how are you? I mean, this is the funniest thing because I literally just saw you. I know. How weird. I know. I'm, I'm doing well. Yeah, I did. I finally, uh, that was... Uh, on Saturday, we were all at the comedy store. That was like my first time, I think, like out, out in like yeah. a year and a half. So I'm glad that I still remembered like how to speak and like dress myself. Um, so that was encouraging. But yeah, it is weird to have just seen you, especially after having not seen anyone for a hundred years. So it's, it's it's nice to see you so soon. I know. I mean, it, it did get really fun that night because everybody what did have that like post pandemic energy, and we were like touching each other. Like Guy and I almost touched tongues. Yeah. Uh, I, think that, I think the word you're looking for is really wasted. Yes, it was a we, very... We, just, we were just celebrating friendship is what it was. There was so much love on that patio. So much booze and so many hangovers. But like, what a dream. <laughs> and so <laughs> many questions. So many people throwing questionable glances at Kate while she was dancing and having a great time. <laughs> I love her. I love her so much. Yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time. I'm glad we all got to do it. Yeah, and hopefully we'll get to do it very soon because uh, for anybody who doesn't know, they are doing live tapings at uh, at Scum and Villainy on August 1st and the 14th. And I'm sure after those events, we will be going out and drinking again. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I'm yeah. all like, I'm like, oh shit, do I need to be at those? I'm like, oh. <laughs> Pause while I text I'm Christian. Like, I probably right. should have known about those dates. Just the whole place. But yeah. No, we'll that, watch, that's, also, that's, Scum and Villainy is a lot of fun. I like that place. Yeah, me too. They're like, oh, there's only 40 tickets. And I'm like, yeah, that's cute. I'm just showing up. And you're like, 15 are mine. I'm like, that's adorable. Yeah. <laughs> I want my seat in the corner, please. Thank I know, you. It is, it's so tiny too. It's definitely like, like everybody's like, hello, nice to meet you. Like, but it'll be fun. And, and I'm not a twig. So I'm like, I'm just going to take up two seats, please. Because these shoulders are broad. You're and like, uh, this back booth is going to be only for me. So thank you. Uh, bye. I mean, to be fair, like, you could just sit on my lap the whole time and we would be fine with that. I have no problems with this. I know. Snuggle bear. I, I mean, do like laps. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my chihuahuas. <laughs> Which, oh my god, uh, those Hawaiian shirts you got for them. Could you die? Like Dying. He's so handsome. Like, and I mean, he knows. He's down here, like, completely passed out. He had a long day. So he, you know, he deserves a snap. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty exceptional. It's, uh, we got two and I do feel like we're going to be getting 
just so many more in the near future because I just need that in my life because he's just so funny and he always acts like he hates it when we put it on he's like no and then the second it's on he's all like damn okay like he totally know like he like feels himself he's all like all right and we're like yeah you look good he's like okay I kind of look good so it's a fun dressing dogs is one of my favorite pastimes he just starts prancing around the living room totally he totally does and I'm like see I knew you wanted this like let me love you <laughs> that's me I am Elmira you're what? I'm Elmira. Oh. You remember the uh, Tiny Toon Adventures? Elmira was a little girl with like the bows in her hair with like the skulls in the middle. Yeah, a hundred percent. Is that the okay lady lady? Or am I thinking of something else? I think you're thinking of something else. She was a little gr cartoon girl that would like- I know who you're thinking of. Hug creatures and they were like, no, let me go. And I'm like, yeah. that's, that's my energy. That's me. I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah, going to I'm hug right. you. You can fight all you want, but I'm not letting go. So yeah. just snuggle in and get comfortable. Yeah, that's me with all animals. Yeah. I mean, that's me with everything. Like, <laughs> You're like, that's me with Drew's tongue. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that was such a near miss. <laughs> Guys, just to yeah, explain, we were, we, were, we were joking around, and we both went to do this, uh, and we just barely missed each other because we did it at the same time and did not know the other one was doing it. No. It's the comedy store, guy. Miracles happen. <laughs> At, <laughs> Ashley understands. It's totally fine. I'm not after a man. Yeah, it was as adorable as he is, no, yeah. I would break him in half. Uh <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. It was a, it was, it was a fun, sloppy tongue licking night. You know, <laughs> what more can you ask for? You felt me up. It was all yeah. fun. <laughs> Which I do also sober, so it's like you know, here we are. It's, it's true. I think that's what you did the third time I came in. You're like, what are these? <laughs> I'm yeah, like, I'm just I'm a boob guy for sure. I just I'm so <laughs> I'm into it. Like, and I just I don't have boundaries. So yeah, sorry about that. I'm, I'll apologize to both of your boobs the next time I grope them. But stop um, apologizing. Just trim your nails a little. <laughs> <laughs> I know I oh, did yes. just recently cut them <laughs> off, and it's so sad. I don't even want to show my little like mitt paws. Ugh. Oh, mine like mine all broke the other day because I was like picking up like boxes, and I was like, ah, shit. I know. It's, like they just started growing goes. back. Yeah, they're terrible because I have just the tiniest, grossest little hands. But I had to cut them for an acting thing, and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm hideous. So they're so they're prime for boob grabbing is what I'm saying. Done. Well, I'll see you in two weeks. Uh, <laughs> now, how is how is the uh, the pandemic been for you? Because you're an actress and you you know yeah. you've been working off and on. Like, ha has have you been working more since the pandemic? Yeah, you know it's weird because like at the beginning, like right when it started, I was like killing it. I was like so I was like career high, like had all these amazing like opportunities, and I was like, oh my god, this show is gonna get picked up. Like, I'm gonna be like what well, and then obviously none of that happened. Um, but it was weird because it was like at first everything, it was like a real like blackout right at first. And there was a lot of like, you know, because at first it was like, cool, we'll be home for two weeks. And then it was like, you know, 14 months later, we were like, <laughs> so it's like at first it was like, okay, this is weird. And then it was like, when it got really serious, that's when everything and they were like, nope, we're not picking up this show. We're not doing this. This is canceled. This is canceled. I projects that got canceled. I got shows that got canceled, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, no. And then there was a real big gap there for a while. But then after that, I feel like once we started to be like, okay, this is a thing. So we're going to need to figure it out because it's not like we can sit it out anymore. Like people yeah. need to get back to work. The world is running out of Netflix. So <laughs> once we started to like figure out how to do it safely and like there was a lot of like, because I'm obviously union. So like SAG was like really hardcore about all the COVID stuff, which was great. Um, so once there was like, you know, boundaries in place for how to do it safely, then I actually worked you know thank god i worked a lot which i was very grateful for and happy for because it was just like i gotta get out of the house <laughs> so it was fun to like feel like an actor again and it was really weird too because when i got to set like because the first thing i did was this like christmas rom-com and i like not only did not know how to like person but also did not know how to act i was like what does this do like it was so bizarre <laughs> i was like i don't remember how to do my job like what do i like so it was fun relearning how to do that um, but then it was, but then it was really consistent work after that, which I'm very, very, very grateful for. So, yeah, you, I, I believe that you were slated to come over to our apartment as we were moving out, uh, of the apartment in Glendale at the end of last year to do a project with Ruba Cobble and Brian and all those guys. Yeah. Yeah. We were using it as a, as a location. That's so funny. Yeah. I forgot all about that. See, they, all, all my shit got canceled. They sent over the script and I was like, Grace is in this, right? Like you're. It's it's about witches. And I mean, yeah, I'm like the girl. I'm like the lead girl. When like, we, whenever we do it. 
yeah, I'm pretty sure that like anytime that there's like anything even remotely witchy, I'm like Grace Hancock. I mean, thank you. Yes. Um, American I mean, Horror Story Coven. I was like, oh god. And it's really good too. I'm so excited. Like I'm, I have faith that this will get made in the next few months. Oh yeah, no, we'll definitely. Um, do for sure. Yeah, because it's it's real good, guys. Keep your eyes out for that. Um, yeah, they're, they're so good. All their stuff. It's so fun working with them. But yeah, I'm real excited for our drunken, uh, we, we drunkenly made, I don't know if you remember, but we drunkenly made plans to go to New Orleans. You, me, we Steph did. Sabra, and who was, and uh, was it Ken's friend? You know, there's, there's no way to know. You know <laughs> it's just all a good, happy fog. I, are you talking about Jen? Yes. Okay, that it was Jen. Yeah, and that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, we definitely, I really want to go. I've never been. So let's keep those yeah. plans. Yeah, absolutely. We can go find a cemetery and call the Four Corners. It'll be fun. I mean, absolutely. I want to go to, I can't believe I'm forgetting the name of it, but I want to go to that one, like the very, very famous mansion of like the lady who was like complete serial killer psychopath who was like murdering all of her slaves and shit. Oh, go to that house. yeah. Yeah, for sure. I don't know why I can't think of it, but yeah, there's a lot of good witchy vampires. There's It's like a crossover of all my favorite things. So I'm like... <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, witches, ghosts, vampires, werewolves, everything's there. Yes. Zombies, because well, the. Like... <laughs> <laughs> we'll just all like get together and watch, you know, uh, interview with a vampire on the on the flight oh, over. It'll be uh, amazing. Oh, I would love that. I know. I remember when like Baby Grace saw that film when I was like way too young to be watching it. I was like, oh, this is my aesthetic. Okay, got it. Yep, check. Yeah, a girl, I, a girl I played softball with went out for the role that uh, for for the the girl the little girl role. Yeah. yeah. And she, it was literally between oh, yeah. her and uh, Kirsten Dunst. That is crazy. Yeah, she oh, and she had like the naturally curly hair. Her name was Rachel Carlton. Uh, yeah, it was really like she came back because she, she missed like two practices and two games and she came back like it was nothing. And I was like, bitch, where were you? Like we're a competitive <laughs> team. And she was like, oh, I had to go to LA for an audition. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I didn't that, know you acted. That is crazy. That's yeah. like, does she like hate Kirsten Dunst? <laughs> she did for a really long time. She was like, ah, oh. but then she, you know, all that stuff came out about like child actors and all that stuff. And she was yeah. like, she's like, let's, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm okay. She's like happily married and shit now. So. Oh, good. Well, good sure. her. Hey, she made it far. She made it that far. That's great. Yeah. And speaking of uh, weddings, congratulations on the engagement. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, look, I, as I've said in many, many times, there will not be a wedding, but I understand when people say congratulations because there is like a, you know, one of these happening. Um, but yes, but I actually, I don't, I always say that I don't believe in marriage, but I obviously believe in it. I know that it exists. It's saying like, I don't believe in microphones. And it's like, well, there's <laughs> one right here. It exists. But, but, but yeah, so it's like, that's not really the right word, but it is, I don't know what else to say. Um, so, so we won't be doing that. But yes, thank you. It's very exciting to do our, our life partnership celebration. How, I mean, it's basically just a party to celebrate you guys being together. That's all. That's all. That's all a wedding is, basically. I just want drunk people almost touching tongues in my honor, and I don't feel like I'm asking too much. Well, then I'm for sure crashing your party, even if I don't get an invite. True, like head pops in. He's like, "Me too. Me too." <laughs> yeah, right. He's just whoop. I'm like, oh, hey, yeah. Yeah, brought him back from uh, from LA. You know, just and stole him. I love him. He's great. I, I love him too. Uh, okay, so you love Interview with the Vampire. What were some of your other like childhood like Baby Grace movies that you watched growing up? Oh my god! I mean, I was definitely raised on like Back to the Future and like Lethal Weapon because my dad was very much like the driving force of like the cinema in our house. It was a lot of like uh, like shoot 'em up type. Like it was like the Patriot every day, and I was like, I'm too young <laughs> to be watching this, but I love it. Um, like a lot of. Hey, yeah, like I was like, oh, that's a lot of books. Um, so it was a lot of that. I think when I started to, I mean, I think genuinely when I started to develop like my own sense of like what I want to see was when I saw Underworld with Kate Beckinsale. I was like, oh, it was like weirdly like my sexual awakening and also my style awakening and all just a lot of it was a lot of it, like all great things. Like, so I think that that because I just love because I was always like such a dark person. And so it was like, it was totally just like my aesthetic. And I was like, God, I just love this. This was so fun. I love like action stuff. So definitely like, and then, then, and then I got into like the exorcist and interview the vampire and like all that kind of stuff. Then my mom was like, no, the devil. And I was like, all right, yeah. Um, so I think it was that. And then I think now, you know, now I'm so, 
I'm so in love with television. I'm so bad at watching films sometimes. So now I mostly do TV when I have the time to do it, which is mostly just when I'm eating. Like when I'm eating, I'll turn something on for a few minutes. So it'll take me like four days to watch an episode of something, but still counts. What are you watching right now? Um, Movies, studying, all that fun yeah. stuff. Um, I am really excited that Evil got picked up for a second season. <gasps> okay, I didn't watch the first season, but I really wanted to. Oh, it's so good. It was great. Okay, good. You'll really like it. Yeah. It's, I love getting like evil witchy recommendations. Oh yeah. It's, it's totally twisted and weird and there's a demon and Dumb. weird shit. And it, it's, it's great. It's so much fun. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. I'm definitely going to watch it. Yeah. Highly recommend, especially for you. Like, I think that you of all people will be like, uh, I need to get into season three. <laughs> like just cast oh, yeah. me please. If there's ever like weird fucked up stuff, they're like, Grace, you'll love it. I'm like, thank you. I will. <laughs> Yay, <Yeah, laughs> aesthetic. <laughs> I have a brand. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. I'm nothing if not consistent. <laughs> now, did uh ha has your movie style uh or flavor changed uh growing up? Or is it had has it pretty much stayed the same from like Kate Beckinsale and Pleather and Scott Speedman morphing um, into a wolf? Yeah, I mean, I think that was just more because I grew up in like a really like a very, very kind of controlling childhood, which is unfortunate. So I think when I was able to do like my own thing, and by that, I mean, when I like snuck out to do my own thing, um, it was definitely like a lot of that. And then I think when it once it started to be like, oh, like I'm a person who enjoys cinema and film, like I think my style just became a little bit more refined. Not that Underworld is not refined, but just a little more like my like my go to top shelf favorite, favorite, favorite shit is David Fincher. Like I just want to watch Fincher shit all day, every day on loop. Like it never depresses me. Like it's people are like, oh, but it's so dark. And I'm like, no, it like literally feeds me. Like Gone Girl, I could literally watch every day of the week. Like Girl with Dragon Tattoo, I could watch every day of the week and love it. So that's definitely, and I mean, as an extension, like that's also kind of my uh, favorite kind of television as well. Not necessarily to, like what I watch and what I act in is very different, but I think that it's definitely, I just love like gritty like I want a good sound design like I want some darkness like I don't enjoy like like light-hearted stuff because I just can't relate to that <laughs> with like the life that I've had so it's like when there's like real shit going on I'm like oh yeah and just like really really solid acting performances and like great music like my favorite things about any film or television is the acting and the music so if like if I have that and then like a sound design and then David Fincher I'm like <laughs> like I'm I'm dead because I'm, I'm so excited so that's definitely my favorite thing but it's too heavy for a lot of people it's like it's too yeah. heavyweight for me and i'm like but i can't watch lightweight stuff like i'm so bored i'm so bored so, <laughs> not a rom-com girl no god no <laughs> unless it's like i mean unless it's like love actually like i love love actually i guess that's kind of a rom-com but yeah i would i would think i would think i would think that we because we talked about this uh at the at the store i think that you would really like uh it's where is it it's called the sweetest thing Oh, God. And you know what? I really don't think I've seen it. But yeah, stuff. There's probably yeah. some like 90s that are like kind of like the more, you know, have like a darker humor to them. I'm sure I would like. This is uh, like the first like bro comedy made with women. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it makes like. me laugh. Like, like they stop at a rest stop and like the women's bathroom is closed. But, so they go into the guys and Christina Applegate pees in the urinal. And like, <laughs> and, like, uh. Like, yeah, right. Uh, and like, uh, what's her name? Um, is God, that a uh, Cameron Diaz? Like, discovers a glory hole and gets poked in the eye by a penis. Like, it's fucking hilarious. Well, I mean, again, it happens to all of us. <laughs> <laughs> happens to the best and the worst of us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that I would definitely I could get behind because I like comedy. Yeah, like, I just I don't I don't I don't know that I watch it a lot. If I'm watching anything comedic, like I'm watching stand up. I don't yeah. I wouldn't I don't necessarily watch like like comedic films but but i love it like i, I love i mean i love every like i just love actors like which is why i don't like cartoons either like i don't i'm not like like pixar stuff doesn't interest me because i just like watching actors so so That's i'll really watch the sweetest thing fine I, I i think you'll like it i think you'll like it it's on netflix so yeah no i think i would for sure too i it's surprising actually that i haven't seen it now what what was uh because you said fincher is one of your favorite directors what's what is your favorite fincher film then Girl with a dragon tattoo. Really? Just yeah. the one or like the whole series? 
Well, he only did the one because they've remade it, oh, you know, yeah. seven like thousand times. times. Yeah. But the one that he did with Rooney Mara and Daniel Craig and you know Robin Wright and the and the Scars Guards. Yeah, and the and the thirty seven Scars Guards uh, <laughs> who are all great and like weirdly all of them attractive, like including the dad. And I'm like, I'm having a lot of feelings about all of you. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's for that's my favorite one for sure. I could I could watch that all day every day. Like truly. it's. It's a really dark film, but it it is definitely worth the view. So if you guys haven't seen it, I highly recommend watching it. Oh yeah, it. and if, if if you haven't read the series that it's based on, it's just amazing. It's so. Who's good. got time for books again anymore? <laughs> Nerds. Nerd. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think it's called the Millennium series, but it's yeah, it's so good. I read the. I can't remember if it was like chicken or the egg. I don't know if, if I read the series after I saw that or before I saw that, but either way, it's like it's all they're all great. Do you prefer reading a book before you see a movie or vice versa? I, th I guess I would say that I prefer reading it afterwards because unfortunately I'd say like 60, 40, like the film is probably not going to do the book justice just because you can't. It's, it's two mediums that are very difficult to mesh. Like you can't take a 500 page book and put it in a two hour film. Like you just can't do it. So I guess I would say afterwards, but I like... I definitely like doing both. If I like a film and there's a book, I'll absolutely read the book. Or if I read the book and there's a film, I'll absolutely see the film. Yeah. I I, I really love to see like the juxtaposition between the two to yeah. be like, I'm like, if I've read the book and I, the movie's coming out, I'm like, I'm so excited to see how they put this portion of the book or the story into action. And like, or if it's a fantasy novel, I'm just like, oh, I can't wait to see what they've done for like set design and costumes yeah. and artwork. And so it's like, one of my favorite things about like book series that get made into yeah. movies. Cause I mean, let's be honest about half the time you're disappointed beyond all belief because you've lived in this universe and like, nobody can do it justice the way that it, it goes and plays in your head when you read. Um, but like, I think that Harry Potter is the closest one to like overall do the books and movies justice. Um, Ma'am, are we forgetting about our Lord and savior, Jesus Christ, Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings is for sure the best, but I love Harry Potter. Yes, I like Lord of the Rings. Harry I Potter. yeah, I just I just feel like this. I I, I feel like the set yeah. design on Harry Potter like just elevates it a little bit more because more like, than Lord of the Rings, for, just for sets. Like yes, I mean, they I built Hobbiton, been... but like it literally like Hobbiton is New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, like. <sure. laughs> like, like yeah, yeah, no, I know what you mean. Because Harry Potter has such a has such like a like a shtick to it. Like, and I don't mean that negatively. Like, because everything's yeah. like a little crooked. You know what I mean? Like stuff. I totally know what you mean. Yeah. So like they had to be they had to like go outside the realm of like actual reality to like build these crazy sets and That's you know digitally true. create these like castles that moved and so dragons true. and shit and like like for the like it was just I, and there's seven books to cover and like. I love, I love the Lord of the Rings movies. I've never read the books. Um, I know, I, I know. Fun and I'll just, I'll see it. <laughs> it's not that I don't want to. I just haven't had the time to like I sit mean, down. They're dense. The, yeah, they are. And I, don't get me wrong. I love a dense book. Like there, there's a series of books that I read every year and there's like five of them and they're 300 pages each. And I just love them. It's like a quasi historical fiction on the history of California told through like four, four families. Yeah. Whoa. It's called the, it's called the immigrant series by Howard fast, who funny enough wrote the screenplay for Spartacus. That's the weirdest connection. I know it's like, as soon as I found that out, I'm like, this can't be the same Howard fast that I love and adore for writing about like these families. That is wild. Yeah, God, it's weird. Spartacus was like hardcore. They were like, and now here's your butt. And I was like, yeah. whoa. <laughs> I like forgot all about that show. It was a great show. I'm like no, the same was... way though. With like films and with books, if I love it, I'll read it a hundred times. Like, yeah. I, I'm I'm like, there's no middle ground in my life. There's no like, yeah, I kind of liked it. I'm either like, don't care, obsessed beyond belief. So yeah, there's a, there's a series out right now that my friend was like, you have to read these books. They're so good. He's working on the third. And I'm I'm a completist. Like I have I to yeah. know. I need to know that there is an end to the story. Well, and I'm too impatient to wait for some fucking like they're like next year. I'm like I'm done. Like I'm not gonna start until I have them all. Like because yeah. I 
except for obviously I read Harry Potter, not necessarily in real time, but like, I think around like the fifth book is when I had to start like waiting and I was like, right. oh, fuck this shit. Like, I'm not like do Lord of the Rings where he's been dead for a thousand years. So I have all the things, but yeah, it's, I, I want the full series before I start. Yeah. But I started the series and it's like the first two books were out. He was working on the third, did not know that he had already been working on the third book for five years. And this was 10 years ago. So, like, every now and then I'll get on Twitter and go to Patrick Ruff first and be like, hey, um, where's my book? <laughs> uh, quick follow-up, sir. Uh, if you could just uh, wrap it up. It's like yeah, just, R. Martin. Just, yeah, just, like, just give me, like, I don't even care if it's, like, a 10-page novella. Like, just give me the fucking end of the story. Oh, the girl a bone. <laughs> but literally. Um... It's like when they do, like, the next chapter when they'll do, like, a preview at the end of a novel and they're like do you want to read chapter one of the next book that'll be out in 2027 and i'm like no like yeah don't put that shit in the back it's like a tiny little hit of drugs like where's the rest right that's why I, I i don't that's why i also just don't like starting like tv series because i need to know that there's going to be an end like i started supernatural at the beginning of the 10th season because they said that that was it and then i got like three months in and they're like oh season 11 is coming out and i'm like god damn it no <laughs> and they finally ended after 16 seasons like go fuck yourself but i love them so much so i'm like yay more content but still yeah. like oh my god just no like i am impatient i was also living on the road so i couldn't go like i, I couldn't wait episode to episode to, yeah like i have no patience oh no, like no, no. i am not no. virtuous <laughs> I feel like, like i remember like being like in like freshman year of college and people were watching like i feel like even then people were like well season eight just came out like i'm like this show is as old as i am yeah. it's like it never ends but they like, they literally have fans that were like toddlers when it came out that are now like old enough to go to the conventions by yeah. themselves and they're like like they both got married and had three kids like one of J uh, jared panelecki met his wife on set because she played a demon and like yeah, he never left he was on set yeah. for years like they they lived together in la for the first season and they were like 22 and you go back and look at them and you're like you were babies Baby. and now they're like six and a half foot giant children that is crazy i know that's like dexter like him at like michael c hall and jennifer carpenter like got married and divorced and like back and like seven other things happened by the time the show ended and it's just like god all the shit that went on behind the, those scenes i would have <laughs> Would have loved to be a fly on that wall. Yeah, that's another series that I need to finish because, like, I kind of fell off the wagon. I was like, oh, it's got a little. I will. You will be disappointed, but I, I love that series. But the ending is one of those. It's like, it's one of those where you're you'll throw you'll probably throw it. Like you'll crumple something. You'll make something that you can crumple just to throw it at the television when it ends. <laughs> but they're they're like reprising it. Like there's like a that's what I a, heard. A fresh. A, bonus season or whatever the fuck so i'm i mean i'll for sure watch it because i'm very intrigued to see what they do with it yeah because it ended real bad yeah it's, there's there are a few things worse in entertainment guys not in the world but there's a <laughs> few things worse in in entertainment when you start with a really great story <sighs> and then the showrunner leaves or the head writer gets fired or something and then it just like <clears throat> yeah like, because you love these characters and you love this world that was created for you. And like, then they just take a giant steaming crap on it. And you're like, well, I need to stab someone now. And you're like, I didn't want to bring a pull up to this showing, sir. Like, and yeah. it's so hard too. Cause it's like, you think, cause it's like, I work like, like 500 people work on every episode. And it's like, it's like, they're all trying so hard. I don't think anybody goes out to be like, let's fuck up all of the fans lives. It just really ruined their day. Like, I think everybody's trying to create good shit, but it's like, you can't please everybody. But it's sometimes I'm like, I don't know, you really shit the bet on that one. Like, I don't know about that. So that's yeah. kind of, that's kind of, I, I mean, it's been a hundred years, but that's kind of how I felt about Dexter. I was like, what? So I'm very, I, I'm giving, I'm going to give them a chance to like, make it up to me with this new, you know, what is it like a reboot yeah it's like it's like it's like a, a like a, a postmark season or something like that yeah it's like, like an epilogue season like yeah weird yeah they're like oh by the way <laughs> five years later this is what happened <laughs> um but i think that's why i love that i think the showrunners are so important because the guy who created supernatural in the first few seasons like he literally had the first five seasons like done and like that's all he was gonna do 
and then it just kept fucking going on. So, Eric, like, but are you free for the next 70 years? Yeah, yes, but what does the rest of eternity look like? <laughs> are you open? Are you available? Free, right? <laughs> you're, you're good. Here's money. I'm not busy. Um, but he's actually also the showrunner now for the boys. On oh, wait, what's, who, what's his name? Eric Kripke. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah. the boys. I fucking love the boys so much. And now he's pulling in all of these like supernatural people because Jensen Eccles is now in it and he's Soldier Boy. And let me tell you, that costume looks so good. Yeah. I'm, what is that? Do they have an announcement date for season three or see whatever the next? They haven't announced it, I don't think. They, they, they were, they were like playing around with like end of this year, early next year. And I'm like, no, now, give it to I'm me like, now. Yeah. So good. That it's... main guy, I, I feel so terrible. I think he's, I think he's a New Zealand actor, but the guy who plays like the main, like, you know, Captain America esque is so good. Like, Anthony he's, Starr. Yes, thank you. I'm so, he's so good. I'm just, I love, I love watching him. He's so phenomenal. I love that show. Well, hello, Jacob. Oh, hi. It's been a oh, while. I didn't know there's like people. Hello. I forgot we were doing this. Yeah, that's all right. I'm it's, like, what are we doing here? That's What's basically what the show is. It's just us talking and then people watch. And I'm just like, this is just me and my friends hanging out and talking about ridiculous bullshit. And they're like, <laughs> so don't hang out, me friends. Yeah. And I no, I, I, StreamYard too, because every time you're you're like feeling cute, StreamYard's like, <laughs> no. Like, I know. Here's a, here's a very rude awakening for how weird your face is. I'm like, oh. this is as good as it gets. And I'm like, I literally was just like, oh, I have powder and now I'm shiny again. That again. Really I'm going to like turn like the... Like I'm gonna go to like 240p just so it's blurry. So be, like to like, it's like backsliding, like editing myself. But I'm just gonna make it shitty quality so you can't tell. I'm like, I don't know why it's doing that. <laughs> I don't either. Yeah. Technology. <laughs> I know. I'm like, <laughs> no. No, I love the boys. I can't wait for season three. Uh, I was part of a recap uh, show for season two, and like okay. I hadn't watched season one, so I like powered through season one and then watched season two with everybody in like week to week, and I was like. This is why I don't fucking watch the shows in real time because I want Ooh. to like I just want to binge all of it. Yeah, I, I can't do it. I kind of it's like one of those worlds. It's like it's so fucked up. Yeah. Oh, I kind of want to live in it. <laughs> yeah, and it's like I feel like that's kind of like like going back to like Fincher and like Gone Girl. Like it's it's like it's so violent that it's absurd, but because it's so out there like it somehow works and it's like yeah. a really fine line to like but when but when it gets like when you like hit that like sweet spot it's so good and I feel like the yeah. boys does that like it's so violent and so out and like people's like eyes and shit and you're just like oh my god but it totally works because of all the you know genius showrunners and all the great people behind it I, I'm really excited it's I like I love television. I watch a lot of television. So it's like, I don't watch every single show being like, this is awesome. And that show like, really <laughs> stuck with me. I was like, this is the best. I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, what's the the guy who plays uh, the butcher? I mean, I don't. Oh my I don't God, know. what's his name? I have no memory or recollection of like what day it is or like who I am or like what's happening. Like Carl no. Urban. I just, in my life, I just... I just want to visit set and I just want him to call me a fucking cunt. Like, is yeah. that too much? Cause no, like, I think that's on all of our bucket list. Okay, great. Yeah. Cause I mean, I, <laughs> I just remember all of mankind when I say that, I just remember like, even now, like people interview, uh, the guy who played Jesse from, uh, uh, from breaking bad. Cause like forever after breaking bad, people would come up to him like in the airports and stuff and be like, call me bitch, call me bitch. Like, I feel like that's Carl Urban's thing now. People are just going to walk up and be like, what? Call me a fucking cunt. Do it. Totally, it's just like totally, yeah. I would. It's love like that. this. It's like this weird sexual thing, and I'm like, I don't want to push that on him. But if he calls me a cunt, I'm. I mean, not but I, like, I would do it. Like, we'll put him on the comedy store, and then it won't be as weird. We're like, <laughs> we'll bring him to the patio. <laughs> yeah, he's but, good I love. Uh, there's something I love more than just like the grouchiest motherfucker. Like, I love those characters. Like, so good. Surly. Like, maybe like a J.K. Simmons. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> With his like, it's and he's all like grizzly, and I'm just like, Ugh. it's it's literally my goal in life to be a crotchety seventy year old lady, just well, like, and, you can, and that's accessible to you anytime you want, like, well, you right? Do, but like, I get, <laughs> but like when you're, I feel like when you turn like seventy, like it's people, like mandatory. People can't really say shit about it. Oh no, like, but I feel like because of my life and what I've done in it, 
I've lived a full life already. And I feel like inside that I'm like 85, 90 ish. So I feel like I should be able to just like sit around in a moo moo and on a rocking chair and like yell at kids. But people look at me where they're like, you aren't that old. Like, then you just oh. lie and you're like, I'm 65. And they're like, holy shit, you look great. And you're like, I know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's genetics. Uh, Five for like 30 years. You're like, I know I look great. <laughs> Yeah, I just can't wait. To, I just can't like I want to be I want to be an amalgamation of Cloris Leachman, Betty White, uh, Elaine Stritch, Elaine Stritch, uh, Eartha Kitt, because oh. I know I can't even tell you like the love that I have for her is so I it, amazing. Yeah, I mean, and not only is she amazing, but the fact that, like, one of her last movies ever was Emperor's New Groove, which happens to be my favorite Disney movie of all Aww. time. Like, it's so funny. Like, who thought that Eartha Kitt, literally, who thought Eartha Kitt would be in a Disney movie? Well, she was it's in Holes. Outrageous. Oh, it's you know, like, bring me, like, a classic, like, cartoon yeah, like Disney cartoon. movie. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, she's great. And she was like, there's so many great like sound bites from her. Like she has those great like kind of like share sound bites that are just like so feminist. And you're just like, yes, I love you. I love that she, she just talks about that like famous threesome like it's nothing. And I'm like, bitch, you lived all of our dreams. All of <laughs> yeah. And that you can add that to your list of like your crotchety uh, list of that you're going to talk about all the threesomes you had and just yell yeah. at kids. She's just a surly unicorn and I love her dearly. Oh, hi, Jilly. Hey. Look at these. <laughs> this old thing. It's not a day over 70. <laughs> Never. <laughs> this pristine lighting. It's like, mm, I'm not dead. I do have blood in here. Sorry. It doesn't look like it. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it the, the young child that you bathed in their blood earlier? Because No. Hmm. <laughs> All right. I thought we said we weren't going to discuss this on screen. Um, <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's fine. Oh, it's just right there, right there, just right there. <laughs> so fun. Now, you said one of your favorite things about movies was the music. Like, what would you say is your favorite soundtrack from a movie? Oh, oh my God. Like, how could I ever answer this question? Not your favorite, just like some of them. Just. Well, this doesn't count as a film, but Natalie Holt, who I think is doing Loki, is just like dope as hell. Killing um, it. I love the guy. I'm not going to even try and say his name, but I love the guy who does like Black Panther, who works with that director a lot. I love Clint Mansell. I love Steve Jablonski. Obviously, Hans Zimmer. I might even say like Inception. Like the Inception soundtrack is like slaps. Like that shit. Like yeah. when you're on the treadmill and like Hans Zimmer comes up, you're like, oh, this is going down. Like, this, it's cute. You think I work out and run. <laughs> like, you know, like off camera, I'm like lifting a weight right here. I'm like, this, I know that I'm moving. It's fine. This is all fight, no flight. This does not run. <laughs> oh my God. Do you want to hear the funniest fucking fight or flight story? Always. So I'm going to, so I'm having, my family's having like really weird, like vision juju. Like a lot of people in my family, like immediate family are having like a lot of eye difficulties, like, you know, blindness and weird shit. And then poor little Baxter is like also sort of moving in that direction, which is, you know, terrible. But so I, of course, being, you know, high strung was like, I didn't go to the eye doctor. So I go to the eye doctor and I was there and he was like telling me, cause as you can see, like I have like almost completely black eyes. Like they're very, yeah. very, very dark. Um, so sometimes it can be hard to like see my shit, you know, the shit, oh, yeah. like, the, thank you. And like the retina and all that, those weird things back there because they're really dark. So he's like up in the thing and he's like, oh, well, it's actually your pupils are so dilated that it's easy to see the back of your eye. And I, and of course, and of course I'm like a total, you know, square. I was like, okay, well, I didn't like, I don't do any drugs. Like, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know why they're like that. And he was like, no, you just have a naturally kind of triggered fight or flight response. And I was like, yes, I do identify as female. Yes. That's what happens. Thank you. <laughs> I will be leaving immediately. Oh, <laughs> I guys don't understand how funny and tragic that is. I know. And I was like, okay, good to know. So I'm walking around looking like an anxious chihuahua on, you know, Molly. So that's good to know. You know, that's, that's well, what I'm going for. Speaking of Molly, Molly Damon says hello. Hey. And yes, Jill, uh, actually, we were on the patio at uh, at the store and I like, she gestured and like, 
the shine bounced off of it and into my eye. And I was like, oh my God, congratulations, by the way. And he, your response was amazing. You looked so confused and you were just like, what I do? I know. I was like, oh no, like, what did I, like, uh, yeah. No, thank you. Yes, it's, uh, I like it a lot. Well, I designed it. Uh, so, hi. Well, I, you're awesome. Tasty yes. waffle. That's amazing. <laughs> I would love to have a nickname like that. <laughs> yes, it is so pretty. Thank you. It's Thank that you. rose gold band, right? No, it's gold. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's yellow gold. But it's a very, oh. um, I mean, I don't know why I'm showing it like anybody can see jack shit. I'm all, <laughs> no, if you zoom in to this millimeter. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but it's a very, uh, the, because it's so dainty, like the band is only 1.2 millimeters. Again, I know that because I designed it. I'm not just a weirdo. Um, but it's so dainty that it like, it has like, uh, like the gold is really, really faint. So it can like, it kind of, whatever it's like next to, it'll look like, like rose gold or, you know, whatever. So yeah. <laughs> yeah it's really pretty. Yay. Um, you're welcome. Um, so, okay. So you, you're, you went over your favorite scores, but what about soundtracks? Like with the music, like the songs? <laughs> Love you. I mean, but, but I'm too much because like because I went to drama school. So, of course, my head's going to like a musical. So not necessarily like a musical That's film or like totally fine. Let's talk musicals. Oh, my God. I mean, well, for sure, Miss Saigon oh. and probably the producers are my two favorite and maybe Aida. Well, not maybe. I mean, for sure, Aida. Um, and probably, you know, and I got to say, I, I hate to say it, I really did. I really disliked the film, but the soundtrack and the performance of Les Mis is just pretty exceptional like you really you don't have to feel bad about not liking that movie it was trash and i want to punch the casting director in the fucking throat for casting russell crowe in that role and then having to hear him sing stars the only redeeming thing about that performance was immediately after when he threw himself off the bridge <laughs> you can oh. if you if you listen carefully there because there's like like uh cement like filters i guess down there you can hear him br like hit one of them, and I laughed so hard. I laugh at really inappropriate moments. People don't no, go, don't go see we movies. We all do. Anymore. We all do. It's like when that guy hits the propeller in Titanic, and like oh, it's very it's so dark. We're all kind of like, <laughs> and then we hate ourselves for it. But yeah, but to be oh, fair, you know, it's it's such a bummer because there is a lot. There's so much politics that goes into casting, and for all we know, they were like, no, you have to put Russell in it, or else we won't get fine. You know, it's like. There's so many things, but yeah, I didn't. Whoever was responsible for it, fuck them. Yeah, I just didn't. I didn't. I don't. I don't know that that was a the best fit that we could have um, gotten in this uh, gigantic pool of talent. But, uh, but yeah, but I, it's but it's so good. And like seeing it live is just like is pretty life changing uh, in a way that maybe like some other stuff isn't. Also, Wicked. I love Wicked. I've seen it yeah, so many times. But yeah, what's Le your favorite Le musical? Le uh, my favorite mu musical movie or musical both. Mus musical uh, musical movie is Seven Brides, Seven Brothers, hands down. I understand how problematic it is. Um, but I remember being like five and being like, why do I have warm, fuzzy feelings for Benjamin? Because he was a giant ginger and I fucking loved him. Also, uh, Julie Newmar was Dorcas. So like he got paired up with Catwoman and I'm like, that's the man for me. Um, I, I literally, I have that on VHS, like. Oh yeah, I it's found awesome. it on I found it on DVD, and it's like one of my most prized possessions ever. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I it's, know. I don't have a VCR, so I just have the VHS just for yeah. you know feelings. Yeah, it's it's so great. I love that movie so much. Musical like stage musicals. Um, something Rotten is one of my favorite things. I love anything that makes me laugh, and it's so it's so perfect and it's Shakespearean because it's highbrow and lowbrow at the same exact time. Yeah, yeah. and it's so fucking funny and so good. I gotta look because I don't know. That's not one that I'm super familiar with. I know what you're talking about, but I don't. I need to take another look at that because it's because I haven't. I don't know the songs very up, well off the top of my head. It's great. They do a whole montage about like the big number in Act One is talking about what a musical is because like they're yeah. trying to create like the next big thing so they can become bigger than Shakespeare. And the Nostradamus's cousin is like, it's a musical. <laughs> like oh my God, they do this huge tap number and they reference like. 35 different musicals at the it's so fucking good yeah i like like tongue-in-cheek like other yeah. at like other like ip stuff like that i'm like i i get that reference <laughs> <laughs> like i love that stuff like in like inside baseball shit yeah i saw it twice within 24 hours Ooh. on, on broadway yeah 30 dollars tickets awesome. yay rush <laughs> 
oh, that like hurts my heart a little bit. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I go to, I go to see shows by myself all the time. So there's usually like one ticket and like a, the really good seats. And if you wait till like five minutes before curtain, they'll be like, all right, 40 bucks. <laughs> That's it's awesome. Like, That's smart. It's like, That's a pro it's, tip. Like, it's like third row center and they don't want that to be like empty. And I'm like, I will fill that seat for and you. And you're like, I will fill this for you and this will fill a spot in my heart. Thank you. Goodbye. Yes. Thank you for art. I mean, at this point, like the next time I hear like the bell at the Pantages to ring to go to your seats, I'm just going to excuse myself into the corner and just like sob. Yeah, I think we all will. Yeah. Like I'm excited that that stuff is coming back. I don't like uh, Yeah. I cried during, uh, was it last year, July 3rd, 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, Lemon Malt tweeted out uh, as if he was like the backstage like stage manager. I was like, uh, pr for production, because it was like 30 minutes before Hamilton was getting released on Disney Plus, and he, it was like, it was like, all right, Cass, this is your 30 call. This is management. This is your 30. And I'm like, as I'm reading this, I'm like breaking down and <laughs> sobbing. I'm like, I miss this so much. That's so so cute. Oh my I mean, God. That, that also gives me like, I literally have instant heartburn from all of my like professional theater days where I'm like, oh God, this is it. 30 minutes. <laughs> That's so cute. I love that he did that. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's, it was, I was like drifting off to sleep very happily. And then I saw that and I just like stayed up crying for an hour and a half. <laughs> I feel like the weirdest shit makes us all cry now. Like, <laughs> and it's fine. Like, we're, like if ever, if, if yeah. somebody's crying on the side of the street, you're like, I get it. You know, we're all just like experiencing emotions again. It's very, there's a lot going on. I mean, I was an emotional crier before all of this happened. <laughs> and so then my... Like and then my love language of touch got like completely ripped away from me. Yes. And is. so now when, I mean, you saw me on Saturday, like if there were people around, I was holding hands and hugging and, you know, snuggling whether they wanted to or not. Yes. Oh my God. Tasty waffle. Uh, I got my nickname from a bad writing competition at my alma mater, San Jose state. Funny enough. Um, I'm in San Jose. It's my hometown. Oh, oh and nice. Grace, I minored in theater and I've seen look at four times. I am so proud. I love that. I think I've only seen Wicked three times. I think I saw it. I saw it on Broadway. I saw it in another very big town, and then I saw it in Phoenix. I can't remember where I saw it the third time. I love Wicked. Wicked. I've, I've only seen it once. So, great. and my friend's girlfriend won a uh, lot of tickets for her, her for her, my friend and me to go see it, and it was front row. And that's too close. It's too close, yeah. Um, it was also Alphaba. It was a an Alphaba understudies first time on stage, and uh, she made some choices. Oh, okay, sure, yeah. And and when she went to kiss Fiero, I literally turned to my friend and I was like, Caitlin, it's a straight girl kissing a gay guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's all yeah, I saw. That's, that's I generally like, how theater works. <laughs> Right, but like there was like no like for, like I I got no emotion off it. Like I'm a super empathetic person. Like if you're feeling it, I'm feeling it. And I was just like, I know I feel so bad no, for like the swings because it's like they don't get any like rehearse. Like they never get to like sit into it the way the main actor does. I saw when I saw Phantom of the Opera on Broadway, uh, Carlotta was the understudy, and I was like, no. she's like my favorite character too. So I was so bummed. And I mean, obviously, like you know, I'm not shitting on any actor. She did great, but I remember being like. Oh, but I wanted just like a little bit more. Just a little, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that Minnie Driver being cast as Carlotta in the movie was one of the best castings of all time. I mean, I love that because I love her. I remember really disliking that film. I it it just solidified in me like this. This is very telling of me. Um, growing up, I would listen to the cast recording on cassette, um, oh, and. And I and I never understood why Christine would pick Raul over the Phantom. <laughs> oh, a hundred percent. This was like the harbinger for like all of my relationship problems to come. Yeah. I was like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm kind of like into the mask though. <laughs> like, like and, and then in the movie, like you know, Raul is played by uh, Patrick Wilson, who I yeah. love now, but at the time yeah. came out like right after hard candy and i'm like that's a pedophile um <laughs> yeah well and he was such a baby. it's like it's like when henry cavill was in the count of monte cristo we were like oh you're not cute yet. Uh, like we don't like you and then now we're all like everybody forgets that he's in that and it is legitimately one of my favorite go-to movies to put on because it's oh. just it's so fucking good there's no um, there's nothing better than revenge 
Yeah. But but then like, you know, Gerard Butler, I had a thing for Gerard Butler and I was like, oh, he's the phantom. Like this solidifies all of my life decisions. Like, yeah. See, now I'm and, going off on like a 300 tangent. Yeah. Yeah. And Emmy Ross, I'm, oh my God. Yeah. Yep. That was like a thousand years ago. That is so crazy. It was uh, like, I, I enjoyed the movie because it was just so out there and fantastical. And like, yeah, yeah. who, who would have like, thought yeah. that Joel Schumacher would have made a an operatic musical like it's just it's a weird thing to say but yeah, yeah. uh no i i liked like I, I can see why people did not like the movie but like for me it didn't it wasn't like oh it was great except for this one person like lame is um <laughs> you know what it is i think now that i'm thinking about it i think it's just because i think i don't know that a lot of like musicals can nail the like the theater conventions that like when you're watching something it's not campy live yeah. but then in in a film form it does kind of come off as like <laughs> when it's not supposed to like and so i think that that's why i don't like it because i don't like anything like cutesy or whimsical so it's like in a theater like you buy it you're like oh shit but then when yeah. they film it it's like it's hard it doesn't translate as well and i think that because i was such a theater nerd i'm like i didn't like yeah. it yeah you need to you need to feel the heartbeat with the rest of the crowd um yeah, exactly. that's my favorite like i can't wait for that um sorry yeah. tacy said something like oh you're seeing me for the second time at the end of <gasps> Oh, nice! I saw it in Chicago with the Chicago crap, uh, with the Ch the Chicago cast, and they were, oh, oh my god, amazing! So That's good so to see. Cool. It was so good. I did not expect it to be as fast paced as it was, because like, like when you when you listen to a musical cast recording, you know it's a song, and then you understand that there is an entire scene until the next song. And with Hamilton, it's like song, 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 yeah. speaking one line, song, song, one song. Line. And so it was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like I didn't have the rhythm down. I enjoyed it thoroughly. But uh, yes, I did go to high school. I went to Limbrook High School in San Jose. Go LHS Vikings. Go Vikings. So I work it three times in a 10-day run of the touring company in Winnipeg. Oh, nice. Winnipeg. What's the full price? Yeah. Dude, Lotto's amazing. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, I can't. Yay! Okay, I said that's a little bit of a boo. Snow bunny. Oh, look at him. He has some allergies. Poor little thing. Oh. He's like crawling on my leg, like, hello. He's like, pay attention to me. Yeah, they're all the nice people. That's how I felt on Saturday. I was like walking around. I'm like, Sony, pay attention to me. I haven't talked to real people in so long. Just crawling up people's legs. We're like, okay, could you not? <laughs> just walking behind people holding their hand they're like what i'm like oh sorry <laughs> it's all right yeah no worries. Uh, <laughs> you can grab my hand anytime <laughs> always yes always uh okay so we went over movies we went over musicals now what about music what's been some of your favorite music to listen to growing up oh growing up i don't yeah. know like Again, I didn't really have like any <laughs> choices given to me as a child. So I don't know that, that that there's really much to say about that. I'm also, I'm really picky with music. So I would, I definitely, a huge majority would be musicals. Mm -hmm. um, but then also if we're just talking about like music, like I obviously love like, you know, like Led Zeppelin and like, you know, all that kind of shit. And then like jazz. So if it's not like Van Halen or like Eartha Kitt, like there's not a, there's not a lot of like go between <laughs> for me, because uh, I don't love like anything that's like kind of like top forty like doesn't really like ring my bell. So I'll like enjoy it. Like I'll be like, oh, this is my jam. But then I'll, like, but it's not something I'm gonna like go intentionally listen to on Spotify later. So it's gonna be more like Jimmy Page and Billy Holiday, which I find really funny considering like Ken's like deep love of music. Like has he just has as he like uh brought you into like or like brought any bands into your world that you've been like oh this is kind of cool like old or new <laughs> i mean no certainly not uh ken and i have very different taste a eh? but also ken is literally almost 15 years older than me so it's a very different uh kind of vibe uh but i will say this he's very he's a huge very knowledgeable very big fan of the beatles and I've definitely, I've actually listened, I've learned about more Beatles music that I hadn't heard before being with Ken. So that was cool. Um, just because, again, it's not really like something I would have thought to have like gone to on my own. So, uh, so I like that. But he likes a lot of like, 
I don't know, bands. And I'm like, I don't know. We don't. <laughs> Every time we're like, I like get into his car, I always immediately turn the radio off because I don't like listening to music in the car. And he's always like, hey. And I'm like, no. And then it's always like something that I don't like. <laughs> but uh, but me, I, mean, I love music. And honestly, I listen to a lot of uh, scores. I probably listen to film scores more than than maybe anything else. So I'm I mean, weird. they're just I'm weird. I mean, well, yes, but that's not a bad thing. Like, uh, what? girl, look at what we do for a living. Like, our shit, like, life is fucked up and weird. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I <have> no idea. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's okay. <laughs> uh, Everything is awful. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was literally my theme song just all year. I would just walk around the apartment it. singing that. <laughs> I really love being uh, around like theater kids too, because I didn't realize like how, how like deep cut a lot of my like random musical theater references are until somebody gets them. And I'm like, friend, like so... <laughs> one of us, one <laughs> of us, like, the claw, like, because <laughs> it's like, God, it's like, I didn't realize what a fucking nerd I was. It's like, you can't, you know, you can take the kid out of musical theater. You can't take. It, you get it. There you yeah. go. Musical. Can't, can't take him off the stage ever. Um, no, I, I toured with Beauty and the Beast for five years, and uh, oh, that was the that was like the first time I'd ever worked in theater because, like, you know, growing up, you you know, you're part of like school plays, and like yeah. I, I was really heavily involved in my church youth group, and then, like for some reason, I was always like the lead in those Christmas pageants and shit. Like, I don't I was, know why. I was no, I don't. I am not an. I'm not an actress. Like for some reason, like we had this like opera singer uh, in our choir, and she like was like you when I was like oh, five, and she was you? like she's like you. You're gonna be my little my little. Oh, she was, like, the director. Okay, yeah. Oh, I loved well, it. I and I was like, I don't, I don't, okay. Like she like sent me to like voice lessons and I'm like, I don't sing. sing. And she was like, but now you do. Yeah. She made me hit like a high B over C one time, like in front of the church. And I was like, I'm never coming back here anymore. Oh yeah. <laughs> one of the many reasons why you never returned, I'm assuming. <laughs> I, I mean, that was one of the first. And then like there were more out like the bigotry but the high b was really it for me it was that was what broke the camel's back uh yeah it was it was rough but uh no i mean like i because i never worked in theater like i was i helped choreograph sweet charity my junior year oh, that's fun. um it I was a, a lot of choreography too oh man it was so much fun i mean <laughs> it's weird i was part of a competitive like our cheerleading team was very highly competitive um i wish i could say the same thing about our football team but no, uh, we were basically bring it on like we were very highly competitive and like a good season for our football team was two and nine and they would like cry while we sang the alma mater after the game like it was real bad um that is awesome and i secretly love that so much <laughs> but we were like super into com competition and so like i couldn't be in theater so I, they were like well we need help choreographing i'm like i'll help that's fine i love that but it was it wasn't until I was on Beauty and the Beast that I realized how much of a theater nerd I was. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. Like I showed up and like but like I was also dropping like pop culture bombs which like my <laughs> boss was like what are you talking about? We actually got into like almost a physical altercation because he was playing the Newsies cast recording. Oh, okay. And I was singing along with the Newsies movie lyrics. Oh, of course. Well, cuz Christian Bale nailed it. <laughs> right? But we got into an altercation. He's like, he, he yelled at me. He's like, you're singing the wrong lyrics. And I'm like, Ooh. I'm like, bitch, no, I'm not. The movie was first. Uh-uh. Yeah. And like, theater kids are, are angry children. We like, almost we came to blows. It was bad. We like <laughs> threw food. Like we were both like, like we were both like very hangry. So we were like threw sure. food at each other. Like that we had like, like in our, <laughs> like you eat that. I'm going to eat this. I'm going to go to the corner. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah i get hangry too my fat like sometimes i'll say like ken will be like are you grouchy like if i'm being grouchy and i'll be like yeah and he'll be like but are you hungry and i'm like yeah, yeah. like <laughs> i totally get the hangries i'm like baby needs a treat <laughs> Factor's like me too okay do you when, want down you don't know what you want when uh when i got promoted to be the manager of the merchandise for beauty and the beast uh my old manager boss came out to like help set up and like help me train him while we were getting set up and everything and i heard him 
I overheard him telling my new assistant, he's like, look, whatever you do, don't run out of snacks. <laughs> I, mean, I, was like, I was like, excuse you? And he goes, and whatever you do, don't throw them at her. Throw them near her. Because if you hit her, she will kill you. And I'm, I just walked by like with boxes of shirts or whatever. And I was like, this is accurate. Take notes. <laughs> and then he's also like, and also she's going to sing the movie version. So just be prepared. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because it's the right one. Although I do, I do love the musical. Have you seen the musical? Like live? Yeah. The, of Newsies? No. I've seen that film a hundred times though, but it depends. It's like whatever one you see, you see, you watch first. If it's like the film or the actual thing yeah. or like the, the cast recording, like that's the one that you're like, well, this is the true one. Like whatever I, one you watch first, like sticks with you. Yeah. I know that there is a version that they filmed um, with part of the touring cast and then part of the uh, Broadway cast and they filmed it at the Pantages and I was supposed to go like, cause like they were my friends. I worked on the tour for a little bit and they were like, Rachel, why don't you come down? It's totally a surprise. Like nobody knows you're coming down. And I was like super set to go. And then like we had a family emergency that didn't end up being an emergency. So I just like was sitting at home bitter and being like, I could be at the Pantages right now with my babies. Yeah. Um, you threw crackers at your mom. You were like, this is <laughs> That's uh cool. that's super it's, cool yeah it was it was it's so beautiful it's actually available i think it's on disney plus or netflix right now but like jeremy oh, jordan cool. jeremy jordan plays uh uh jack kelly and like yeah oh, it's man. oh i totally got to watch that that's awesome it's it there's like twi two times more newsies ca like of the cast than are normally there because a oh, the stage is yeah, massive and advantageous and b yeah. like they were combining the cast it was a really really sweet oh that's sick yeah, yeah. Also, even, theater. yeah also the fact that the dance captain on broadway was the dance captain on tour and like ryan Steele is one of the most talented motherfuckers i've ever seen he's also like an angel on earth who's like the best person ever but he does things with his body that i'm pretty sure you like disobey the laws of physics yeah like yeah. it's ridiculous yeah it's the devil's work for sure but, it is yeah. in in you know dance shoes <laughs> that's so cool i love i love hearing when people are also good people it's so fun yeah there have been very few people that i've toured with that weren't like amazing human beings because otherwise they would just disappear on the road i get hired yeah i know well, i feel like i've only worked with like a lot of like i've never worked with anybody like super shitty like ever which is nice we did once <laughs> But we You're don't like, talk about her anymore. <laughs> his name was Christian Harlan. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's somebody you throw food at, not near. Sure, sure, sure. Because he oh, doesn't like, bend over and pick it up. You just throw that Snickers right at him. Yeah, uh, yeah, like a melted <laughs> one. Yeah, it just just a little bit. Um. Oh, tasty, tasty waffle. Oh. waffle if we like opera, I love opera. I love listening and watching people do things that I could never do in a million years. And I will never, ever be able to sing opera. I mean, hey, you're still young. You're not yelling at kids yet. You I, lost, I I toured with punk and metal bands for 15 years, oh, no, for 10 years, and I lost my ears. So, yeah. like, when I think I'm singing on key, I'm not. <laughs> Certainly not. It's okay. We won't tell you. No, I love opera. And you know what I really fucking love? I mean, I just love, uh, you know, like classical music. Like I'm all about like Beethoven and like Wagner and like, give me like some like Romeo and Juliet, which makes me miss ballet, which I would love to see. Like I miss probably ballet even more than theater. Also, there is a hair. This happens to me all the time. <laughs> there is a hair on my face somewhere that I will just keep groping my face trying oh, to yeah. find. It's like a possessed ghost hair that comes in and out of the multiverse to fuck with me whenever I'm on camera. So it's like, if I look like I'm having some kind of weird tick, it's because I'm trying to find this hair. There it is again. Okay, no, that I, that one I found. The problem <laughs> is that my fan's on, so it keeps giving me little fuzzies. But anyway, yeah. yes, I love opera. I love ballet. I hate ghost hairs. Well, the, the last show that I toured with was an American in Paris, and it was like the most beautiful combination of musical and ballet. <laughs> yeah these bitches were like 
acting and singing while dancing on point and looking flawless it was a very very hard time for me yeah, um, unbelievable. now that's the devil's work truly like i'm literally just like no 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 how what that like, tour brought out my aggressive love like crazy because people would just be like they're so good i'm like yeah they're such assholes like just just like oh i hate them so much they're so beautiful and so wonderful and every because single one of them was, yeah. and they're so tiny i could throw them like a javelin um but they're all just so sweet and like so just like they're just the best i miss them but like that show i think was really special i think it hit at a really important time because it was all about like the literally the, the show starts with um with them like recapping what how they got to the time in history uh because it's right after world war ii and it starts yeah. off with a bunch of french people screaming at these giant banners with nazi symbols on them and they tear them down and like every like i'm getting goosebumps just remembering it because that's every, like the opening and everyone's like yeah well it starts off with adam coming up you know singing like doing a little like hey so this is the the opening this is what the story is about like and he goes and it starts like this and he starts playing the piano and like the like the the floodlights come up and you see yeah, yeah, the yeah. the people yelling and it literally they tear it down they run it over the piano and come back and rehang it and it's the french flag and like yeah. people every single night cheer like i remember we were in texas and i was really nervous because we were <laughs> they're like cheering for the wrong flags you're like no 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 <laughs> yeah i was like oh like this is this might get a little testy tonight and people come to the theater armed and i was like really worried yeah oh my yeah God. yeah um i mean it's texas it's an open carry state um so it was just it was very like tense opening night yeah. And then, so I like, I always make sure to stand in, like, I love to watch the beginning of it. Um, and then I'll come out and like balance or whatever. But uh, I was in there the opening night. And as soon as they tore it down, people were like on their feet cheering. And I'm just standing in the back of the room, like crying, yeah. happy <laughs> tears. I'm like, this is yeah. so good. I'm so proud of us. Um, it was really yeah. great. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. It's, it's so powerful. It's so like, it's, I hate like, I sometimes can be like resentful when like, especially like in LA, which is like to an extent I understand, but it's like, oh, you're an actor. And it's like, like the yeah. art that we create literally entertains the entire planet. And like, there's a lot of storytelling that is extremely powerful and palpable and changes minds and like spurs on change. So it's like, and I'm not saying only actors do that, but I hate when people are like, mm, yeah. And I'm like, no, like there's so much cool shit. Like, and yet, cool and yet those people during this time of awfulness had nothing to do but go home and watch the art that they so harshly judged in order yeah. to help them through a tough time. Like, I just, yeah, I feel like whenever people criticize that, I'm just like, yeah. oh, and uh, your Netflix account just got deleted. Fuck you. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, oh, do you not watch HBO? Like, oh, do you not watch Netflix? Do you not watch Prime Video? Like, oh, okay. Like, so what do you do at home? You play chess and jerk off? Like, sure thing. Like, yeah. And maybe I mean, he does. Yeah. <laughs> no king shame. Chess is very sexy. I mean, it's mind games. I mean, we all did. Did you watch what was the the show that oh, came out? Um, yes. So good. Yeah. I love it. I love her. I love the show. And like a true nerd, I love chess. So it was a, it was a real combination of a lot of things I enjoyed. I was like, oh, this is this is doing it. This I'm waiting. Really I'm waiting for somebody to cast her and Amanda Siegfried just for like the fact that they both have like giant eyes. <laughs> like they need to play right? sisters. Yeah, and she and it's uh, Anya Taylor Joy is like so like sort of otherworldly looking, yeah. and I really like that. Like I like interesting looking people, mm -hmm. and I just like I like looking at her face. She's you know? very ethereal. Yeah, exactly. Like it's it's like part fae, part alien. I can't really decide. Yeah, I'm like you're like Galadriel's yes. granddaughter who might like drink my blood, but I'd be like okay with it. But you'd be like mm, right here, please. <laughs> <laughs> did I you watch? Uh, did you watch the Tomorrow War on Prime, or is it on no. Prime? The one with Chris Pratt, where he there's like oh I don't know if I should. Oh, not it. yet, not yet. Oh, you're fine. It's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. But there's like me and my sister were dying laughing because it's like the the like the world is just shit. Like it's so bad. Like it's just so apocalyptic. It's unbelievable. And the whole time we were joking that like if this is the I would literally just be going up to the aliens like right here. I'm done. I'm good. Take it out. Like I'm not fighting for this shit. Like it's so funny. But it's just it was strip down naked, walk off like a starship, just be like, <laughs> yeah, do it. Rightly. Like, Take I'm me. Not, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm like, if there's no like auditions for me to go on and like chihuahuas for me to fall in love with, like, I don't care. Like right here, right here. Yeah, dude, if there's, if, if something happens and the, all the dogs somehow just like, I would, I would just be like, nope, I'm just gonna yeah. go. I'm just gonna pretend I'm Ophelia, put some stones in my dress and like go walk into a river. It's fine. Yeah, that's facts. Yeah, I feel like I would just like like would just turn into Voldemort and I would just like disappear into the wind in a million. Like, <laughs> there's no world where I could do that. Like, absolutely not. Yeah, no. I need I need some puppies. I need yeah. like and I steal them all the time. Oh my god, there's one oh. dog in our neighborhood that gets walked in front of our house, and for some reason I happen to be outside like almost every time that it gets walked, and like. And now you're best friends. I love this story. We're not best friends. He's so scared of me. <laughs> I know it's okay he's like, someday. he's like older and like low to the ground he's almost like a basset hound but he's not and like I move too fast and I'm too big I think and I scare him like, <laughs> he I always just like powers and I'm like no I like sit on the ground and like try and get him to come over and like oh. you are the only dog that has ever been terrified of me <laughs> the dog's like my ophthalmologist says I have a very intense fight or flight response <laughs> <laughs> and I can't flight right now <laughs> And then I walk in and I'm like, come to mama <laughs> with my gigantic sober pupils, apparently. So <laughs> I got it's that going funny. for me. <laughs> like, I was like, what do you say to somebody who says like, oh, your pupils are di like just so dilated and gigantic. I was like, I'm not on cocaine. <laughs> you just look at them and be like, well, your hairline's receding. I know. I was like, well, are we stating the obvious? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it is LA, so I mean, he's probably used to that. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was funny too because I because I had a mask on and I had no makeup on and I was in workout clothes and he was like still trying to get my nuts and I was like so flattered I was like I still got it <laughs> yeah. like, even like this and I was like God men will just really they just no 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 nothing. no bar like, anytime like any place any situation. But I find I find that it's usually when I'm like <laughs> travel days on tour were a big thing because it was like you were you know you're sitting on a bus for eight hours you wear like I yeah, literally went out and bought up. I went out and bought a pair of triple X sweatpants because they're the comfiest fucking things you could ever find oh for sure so I was wearing that I would wear that in like a like like a tank top underneath because like the what like the the temperature would fluctuate in the bus and then like a hoodie with like no makeup like a top knot I haven't washed my hair in two days and like that was when I would run into guys and I'm like what the fuck but the thing is, like, they're still like, hey, what do you do? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, and you're like, my butt cheeks are sweaty. Can you sit down, sir? Like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to pee, please. I have to get back on my bus or they're going to leave me here. And I don't want to become your third wife. I'm very hangry. Buried under your I house. I don't want to get murdered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it depends on who they are, though. You know? I mean, look. If I can go out with a smile. I'd be like, fine. Like, if, if who? Moa, like, accidentally strangled me, I'd be like, all right. Um, Ryan Reynolds in Amityville Horror. I was oh. like, <laughs> now that's kinky. All right. I feel like I just, I'm like, you can kill me, but you just, just fuck me first. Like, that's no. totally fine. Like, I won't put up a fight. Like, if you want me to run, I can run. I won't, won't run very fast. Like, it's fine. I'm learning a lot. This is great. This is good stuff. Yeah. Glad we're getting into like the kink part of the show. This is, good. oh, this is yeah. Great. Well, we, we're, as you said, we are in a timeline. So we got like 10 minutes left. Oh, yeah, true. Oh, thank so, you for like, me on time. Cause I would have never, I would have never girl, this at it or paid attention. I've like nowhere to be. And I'm just like, this show can go on literally. I think my longest show was seven hours. Like, if you just talk, you just keep talking. Uh, yeah, it's so, great. Like, it's because you, yeah. you're a great interviewer. You have so Aww. much to discuss, and there's so many fun things. Yeah. Thank you. I also just miss people, and I miss you, and you're so interesting. It's so much fun to talk weird, dark, creepy kink shit with you. All my favorite stuff. <laughs> if it's like, dark I love it. Chihuahuas. I don't think it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I'm a uh, yeah. I'm yeah. I'm weird. I'm weird. Yeah. No, Ryan Reynolds has been doing it for me for a long time. Yeah. See, he's too pretty for me. I don't, but I, I get it. I understand it. Yeah. But I don't like, yeah. guys, I mean, it started, it started off. Like, I need, see, like, I can't, I, I'm not a pretty guy girl. Like, I don't like them pretty. Like, I really, like, I Ryan can appreciate Reynolds? Reynolds, Reynolds is not pretty, dude. That good. Like, I don't think he's pretty. I think he's like kind of like an everyman. Like, I don't know. 
I think if he if he could fit in in like a Dolce and Gabbana ad, ad, then he's a pretty boy. Like he, he could for sure do that. Yeah, but so can Willem Dafoe, and William Dafoe is not a pretty man. <sighs> okay, so, well now we're really getting into kink because like he's he's sexy. He's not a pretty man. No, but he's that he's that sexy ugly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like weirdly am. Yeah. You just yeah. explained a lot for me. Yeah. That's there's I'm like, I'd be like, yeah. And apparently yeah. he has like a gigantic do like a, just the hugest dick. So holy crap. Yeah. He like you haven't heard this story. He did no. that in that film where he does like full frontal. He's literally wearing a prosthetic literally because the director was like, your dick is so big. It's going to be distracting. And he's wearing like a fake little weenie. So he's hooked he's with like, a fake dick. He's like he's like he's like sex slash life hung. Apparently he has like just a big old thing. So there you go. Wow. Skinny white boys, dude. Big dick energy. Skinny white boys. That I, my girlfriends and I call them zip thuds. Uh, <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah, there's just yeah yeah. What yeah. Are you do? <laughs> do your best. <laughs> like, say a prayer and be like, all right, Willem. <laughs> Lots of lube and breathe deep. <laughs> Somewhere Ken's in the house like, now what? <laughs> Ken's never going to agree to come on this show now. <laughs> he's so used to me. Like, I'm so inappropriate. It's hilarious. Like, it's just, it's, he's, he, yeah. I love this. You, like, Chris has been listening to me for over a year. He knows exactly my type. I like yeah. them big and burly. If they can put the man into manhandle, they're all mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I respect like, that. See, that's why I feel like Ryan Reynolds is, like, off-brand. I feel like he's too, like, uh, American-looking, maybe. I mean, yeah, but he's Canadian, so I think that that, maybe there's something oh, there. I feel but like he is, but he's also, he's also highly inappropriate with his humor, yeah. and I think that that's why I'm like, you're, you're my favorite Canadian. Yeah, 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 I like that. I like, yeah. like, off-color, <laughs> if you couldn't <laughs> tell. <laughs> Yeah. No, he's 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 great. Who are on your uh now, now that we're uh, getting into some real fun guys, we've got 10 minutes. If there's anything you want to ask us, you have to send it into the Streamlabs now. The links down below. Uh send it in. We'll get them asked as fast as humanly possible. Um <laughs> like, who would you bone? <laughs> well, I was gonna ask who's who's on your who's on your uh, your pass list. You know, it's hard to say because I like I am legitimately like I am like textbook pansexual so i really like i really can't say because of what i can like look at somebody and be like yeah like like you're an attractive person but i'm not like necessarily sexually attracted to somebody until i get oh. to know them so it's kind of hard to say because it's like i for sure want to fuck lena Headey. i for sure want to fuck jason momoa but yeah. then like i don't know like i've met lena Headey and she was pretty cool but like jason momoa also has kind of like a like a surfer bro personality which i don't love so like mm -hmm. i don't I don't, I feel like I'd get there and I'd be like, I just, I don't know, today is not the, you know, so it's like, yeah. I don't know. So there's like, but again, I like weird, like I like interesting weird, like, I don't know how many people are out there being like, I want to fuck Willem Dafoe, like, it's <laughs> a weird, that's weird. There's a collection. Um, yeah, but it's, uh, so it's more like, and also it's hard too, because like, a lot of them I know are obviously going to be actors because the majority of celebrities are yeah. actors. So it's like a lot of times I'm like in love with like the character that they play. Like there's this guy, oh man, this is, I'm going to be, oh, I know a great example. Like in Shadow and Bone, like the guy, like Ben Barnes, like totally does not do it for me. But then him in that show, I was like, <laughs> I was like, yes, I don't know. Which again, <laughs> goes back into some deeply rooted issues on my part because he plays a murderous villain. But so, so it's like, you know, so, I would fuck his character. <laughs> to be fair, the villains I think it, are better are are more usually tend to be more well written and like fleshed out as a character. So like, of course, I would totally yeah. fuck Kylo Ren. Yes, I know everybody knows, but I would. I just I can't say it enough. Yeah, I'm kind of hit or miss on Adam Drive. But that's the thing; it's Kylo Ren. Yeah, that's fair. I just love angsty, long-haired <laughs> villains. <laughs> <laughs> You know, no. trying to think of who else falls into that. I know. You know who else I loved in Shadow and Bone is the guy who plays. You haven't, you haven't watched the show, have you? Yeah. So this is no, I have. Oh, yeah? okay, it's been a while. Who's the guy who has the cane? Oh, uh, hold on, hold on. I'm looking. You want to know the thing? I was watching that and I was like, oh my god, like I'm in love with it. it oh, he kind of looks like Dane DeHaan, who is also like weird, and I'm like, 
into it. Yeah, Dana Hunt's got a look to him, a very specific look. Well, and he plays a lot of really dark, creepy characters. So I'm like, yeah, like, why? That's fair. <laughs> I, I can't figure out who it is. Is it Simon Sears? I don't even know that I know his name in real life, but I literally, I was like, oh, he has an interesting face. I like this character. And then when they like panned out and he had a cane, I was like, oh my God, like, <laughs> that's weird, Grace. Like that, it was such a turn on. I was like, and he's got a goddamn cane. I was like flipping the table. I was like, well, I can't watch this show. Like, this is terrible. Like, who is that man? Like, I have to go find him immediately. How about you? Yeah. How, now that we've gone through all of my weird things, who's on your, who's on your past list? Um, Jack Black. Okay. Oh, you know who's on mine also is Jack Nicholson. Ooh, I uh, I Thank sat on know. his lap and he bought me a drink at a at a Laker game one time. Like you can't just low key come in here with these fucking lap stories. You know how much I love laps. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the bar. I was it was literally a blind date, and this like friend of a friend of a friend it's or whatever. Jack Nicholson, you're like, I, oh. No, he had these. He had these like VIP like Laker tickets, and like, well, yeah shoot me, but I'm not the world's biggest basketball fan. Like I love sports and I can follow everything. I know the rules and everything, but like, oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> like basketball's not like, it's not in my top three. Oh, okay. Um, but I was like, it's a fucking Laker game and I'm never ever going to get these seats again. Also, yeah. the guy seems like he could be kind of cool. Um, so we get, we get to the, we get to the Staples center. We get to the bar, like the VIP area bar, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, standing at the bar, oh, order yeah. drinks, the guy puts his credit card down and he's like, okay, I have to go pee. I'll be right back. So he goes to the bathroom and the, the, credit seat, card. the seat next to me swivels and it's fucking Jack. And he's like, did your date just leave you? And I'm like, no, you just showed up. Um, and he, he like, like, like he was being sweet. Like he hasn't fucked 5,000 humans. Like, but don't still. care. Don't care. I'll take my pen. is a great number. I will take my penicillin. I do not give a shit. Um, and so, like, he just swivels around, and literally, I don't know what happened, but by the time my date came back, I was, like, sitting on it, I was, like, perched on his knee, and he was, like, stroking my hair, and I was, like, this is the best day of my life. That's the uh, best the day day of ended anyone's up, life. Literally, the only good thing that happened that night was that, um, <laughs> and when you the saw guy was, card. he was a complete dud, and I'm, like, I'm never going on blind dates again. <laughs> <laughs> and then you went home with Jack. No, no. I, I was watching. I if was watching I did that, I would have gotten pregnant, and I don't want children. Like, let's be honest about this. Oh yeah, no. I mean, kids yeah. are trash, but like, I, I would for sure play with Jack Nicholson. I was watching a show, and there was like this guy, this actor who's like really good, and he's like, like kind of hot. Like, I was like, I'm kind of like, like he's hot. Like, like, and I'll, he plays like the bad boy in the show with like tats, so that's why. Yeah. Um. Again, I got problems. Um. And I was like, no. And then like the more I watched it, I was like, God, this guy's really hot. He's Jack Nicholson's fucking son. So I want to fuck him and his son. Like, my therapist doesn't get paid enough to hear about this kind of stuff. Like, what do I, what do Scott, I do with that? Scott Kahn and James Kahn. Just mm -hmm. saying. Wait, I'm going to look up Scott Kahn really fast. Oh my, Scott Kahn is the younger, he's the, he's, uh, yeah, James Kahn. James, yeah, James Kahn. It's his son. He was in, uh, Hawaii Five O. Uh, he was in, uh, he plays one of the brothers, uh, in the Oceans movies. It's, uh, he plays, oh, uh, no. oh, no. brother. I can't, I gotta give it a pass, but I, but I love that for you. Yeah. He's, he's very bro, but like, dude, James Caan, even now. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And especially back then. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 Uh, in case anyone hasn't noticed, I do love older men. Uh, that is that is a consistent. You don't say. <laughs> that is a through line uh, through my very complicated sexuality. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, um, uh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Overall, I'm not a big, uh, like, I love Carl Urban, but, like, there's something about the butcher in the boys. And I'm just like. <sighs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, basically, just, just the entire cast of the boys. Can I just say that? Oh, like, for sure. Every yeah. single one of them, including yeah. including little Huey. Um <laughs> yeah, it's uh yeah. Yeah, I would I, I would literally say I, I can make a man out of you from uh, Mulan while I'm fucking him a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean I, I'm not against Elizabeth Shue being there, you know, like and oh, she's not in the next like season. I said, the entire cast of the boys. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't mince words. I 100% stand by that. And then hopefully Jack Quaid invites his dad. I don't know. Like, maybe I have a thing. I don't, I don't know. Maybe what? it's a family affair. It's fine. Hey. Uh, <laughs> I love that this got real weird real fast. And, and we're sober. Superpower. 
This is my favorite thing is right now, like literally from this last weekend, I'm like, I'm just going to drink water tonight. Because usually oh, I'm like down in drinks. This is us sober, guys. <laughs> well, I think everybody that was there on Saturday is now completely sober for at least a decade. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're good until August 1st when we see each other again. <laughs> yeah. When, when Grace is three hours late for an event and I'm like, huh? What? Oh shit. There's a, there, there's an ongoing joke in one of my favorite comedies. It's so stupid. It's called Euro trip. And like the kid gets oh, drunk yeah, and yeah. every time he wakes up, he's like, I'm never drinking again. Like, I just feel like that's going to be the theme for the next like six months yeah, as we all get together it. randomly. Yeah. Um, okay, guys, we are ending the time. I am checking because I don't want to make Grace late. Uh, she is the best. Um, okay, no, no stream labs. I had so much fun. Okay, real quick before we go, um, I have to ask this question. It's my favorite last question. What is your favorite thing about music? Oh, it gives me, <laughs> it puts me in touch with my emotions. Cause I'm very uh, emotionally detached and I keep things extremely close to the vest. Um, and when I feel or hear, which is kind of like happens simultaneously, like these big swells, it's almost like the sounds of emotions and it like reconnects me to mine, which I need for my craft. So that's what I, I love. love I love that. And I love you. And soon I'll get to hold you close to my vest again. Uh, grope you inappropriately sometime soon <laughs> it's right. never inappropriate if i don't object i'm just you know that's true consent is key consent I is can't key. say it enough if i don't say no we're fine um okay. all right why don't you go ahead and tell the kids where to find you and all that fun shit yes thanks for dealing with me playing with my hair literally this whole time because this fan is just like blowing just like five pieces into my eyeballs um, so you can you can uh, follow me online at Mrs. Grace Face uh, on Twitter and Instagram, and uh, you can go. My Reiki stuff is ReikiHealingWithGrace.com. You can I don't know Google me. You know whatever you want. I think I'm on Wikipedia. <laughs> go crazy. Enjoy it. Have a great night. <laughs> well, I love you so much. Thank you yeah, so much for coming you. and hanging out. Uh, and fun fun note before we head out, guys. Next week I don't have the thumbnail prepared, but I got stuff motherfucking sabra coming on next week oh, yeah. at 7 p.m <laughs> shit's gonna get weird it's gonna be fun you might get a link at some point we might be drunk i'm just saying be prepared uh <laughs> Poor girl. But, uh on behalf of grace and myself thank you guys for hanging out and being the best and now we get to do my favorite thing because you never know when it ends and we get to do 